Right. Good morning. This is actually lab number eight, but I think it's production number six of the David and Herman seventh grade science show. All right. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to do the um, endothermic reaction. So David is going to pour uh, acetic acid, aka vinegar, into both of these beakers, probably just enough to cover the thermometer. Okay, so why don't you put about 150 milliliters in each beaker? A little more up to the 150. Is it 150 milliliters? Yes, sir. Okay, and 150 milliliters into the other reaction. So one of these is going to be exothermic. One will be an endothermic. So we're going to do the endothermic first. So push the steel wool out of the way. Just we can just push that over out of the way and just get the whole thing to the side. Okay, so just set it over here. Okay. So Dave is going to add baking soda or sodium bicarbonate into the vinegar. And he's going to do it slowly. And this is the important part. We don't want it to fuzz over. So he's going to slowly add um, the baking soda. We just want it to mix, but we don't want it to go boom. Okay? So slowly mix it in. Oops. Stop. Let's take initial temperature reading. So let's take an initial temperature before I add any more. What's the initial temperature on Celsius? We're using Celsius. It is about 15. 15 degrees Celsius. Okay, let's proceed. Initial temperature is 15 degrees Celsius. See, so notice he's cautiously adding a little bit at a time. So we get the reaction, but not too much carbon dioxide. We don't want a lot of carbon dioxide. We're getting oh, oh, some there. Oh, oh, oh. oh, there you go. Okay, that keeps it under control. How about the rest of it? Very good. Dave's doing a really good job of controlling how much carbon dioxide we have. So it doesn't make too big a it's mess. Gonna do it. <laughs> well, so much for... You know, this is a really good stain remover, by the way. So <laughs> for carpets? All right, add the rest of it. So we're adding about a teaspoon of sodium bicarbonate. And stir it up a bit with that spoon. Or so, well, yeah, yeah, good idea. Use the thermometer. Oh, it's gonna. It's gonna go again. There she goes. Sorry. Okay, so on the board, while we're waiting for that, Ooh. on the board, Dave's going to write down their initial temperature. So in your lab book, I need you to write something like this in your lab book. So on your lab book, write down lab number eight. We have an exothermic reaction and an endothermic reaction. So we just did the endothermic reaction. So over on the right-hand side, Dave's going to write 15 degrees Celsius. Okay? And so I'm going to assume the exothermic is going to be the same amount. So let's go ahead and put 15 degrees Celsius. This is coming up. <coughs> Very good. Okay, now back to our reaction. Back to the action here. So, how, what's the temperature now, Dave? I would say about 12. 12, so very good. It's gone down lower. So let's give it a couple more minutes, and then we'll wait for the other stuff. So while we're waiting for that, Dave, take the steel wool and swish it around with the thermometer. So now we have steel wool. You can use steel wool, this plain, or you can use a Brillo pad. It seems to work the same amount. I'm surprised because of Brillo Pack. What we're doing is we're taking the, uh, the oil off the, the steel wool using the acetic acid to do that. Okay, we'll let that set a while. Back to our endothermic reaction. So it went from 15 degrees down to 12. Good. So let's add 12 degrees to our chart. Celsius. All right. So back to our experiment. So we're going to let you finish this one up. 
Uh, let the acetic acid and baking soda sit for another 10 minutes. Take the reading again. I want three readings on it. And at the end of that, write down delta T, or what we call change in temperature. So, David, show us the delta T on the chart. Go back to the chart. And you'll see that both of them, we should end up with a delta T for the endothermic reaction and a delta T for the exothermic reaction. Delta T is the fancy science words for change in temperature. You got it? All right. Very good, Dave. So now we're going to go back and uh, swish the steel wool around again. So you're going to have, because you've only got one thermometer, you're going to have to do this in two different steps. We get to do it at the same time. Okay, now, Dave's going to pour off the acetic acid into a separate cup. Now, we're going to leave the thermometer in with the steel wool and cover it up with a towel and let it set. Now, Dave has a, a project going already. You see the tape dispenser? Why don't you bring that up right in the front center? So this is one we did earlier. Notice that the steel wool is rusty looking. Can you bring me in for a close-up of that? Really close up so I can see it. Notice that, ooh, yucky. The steel wool is rusting. As it rusts, that's a chemical reaction. It's an exothermic chemical reaction. So we're going to take the temperature of that. Take the temperature of it now with the steel wool. And we'll see if it's gotten warmer at all. It was 15 degrees Celsius. And now let's see what it is. Where would I get it to touch? Right I there? don't know. Yeah. So that temperature now should be like 17 degrees. Isn't it, Dave? It's 17 degrees. Yes. So Dave's going to now put 17 degrees on the exothermic reaction. Very good. So now you can see the exothermic is getting warmer because the heat is coming out of. The heat is exiting the reaction. And the endothermic is getting colder because the heat is being sucked into that chemical reaction. Is that cool? So what I want you to do, students, finish this response, wait another 10 minutes, take the temperatures again, and write down delta T for both of them. Take a picture of it and send it in on Google Classroom. Okay? Very good. Good job, Jave.